welcome, welcome, welcome. Appreciate you being here. Hope you enjoy these comments videos as much as I do. This one in particular, we're going to get the uh, lighthearted stuff out of the way first. And then towards the end, there's going to be some in-depth uh, analysis going on. Because a very interesting situation occurred with a commenter, a guest. So stay tuned for that if you're interested in it. Uh, if you're just here for the lighthearted stuff, you're in the right now space at the right continuum. First one comes from Enoch Bell, and they say, For anyone who is just starting out watching Jason hyphen Matthew colon Glass, yes, I know, they messed up the spacing there, and his educational videos, like myself, he does respond to your emails. He is the world. Well, I thank you very much for that. In that last sentence there, I can guess is uh, a reference to the video that they're commenting on, Man in No Motion Como, uh, Cosmos, where if you parse the word world, it comes back to the word man. So they're saying, I'm the man. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much for that compliment. Um, you're entitled and welcome to your own perceptions here. And yes, folks, I do cool, give Cooley on it to emails. If you share your full correct name, I will most certainly get back to you. So again, I appreciate the compliments. Thank you, Enoch Bell. Next one comes from Die Cameron, and they say, Great vid. Interesting. There was no mention of grammar in the BBC article about the goons attempted kidnapping. I guess there wasn't any grammar to mention. Well, there was adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun grammar all over the place, wasn't there, Die? But as far as correct grammar... Nah, less than zero. Next set of comments comes from someone named ATLJ, hyphen blah, blah, blah. And they say, for the David hyphen win colon space Miller apostrophe hyphen knowledge of this conversation topic question is with the David Wynn Miller Verbal claim of the continue persist with the make perfect syntax grammar by the learn and perform well. So backwards, you would say for the learn and perform well of the make perfect syntax grammar is with the continue and persist of the David Wynn Miller verbal claim. With this conversation topic question. By the David Wynn Miller knowledge. So. The concatenation is fine. It's for the facts, of the facts, are with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts. What I'm seeing here, first of all, this individual is making a claim for David Wynn Miller's knowledge. How do they know what David Wynn Miller's knowledge is? Did David Wynn Miller give ATLJ permission to make a claim on David's behalf? Being that David has passed away, which we wouldn't know, uh, by the text in this uh, comment, but being that he's passed away, I don't see how he can make a claim for anything, let alone others make claims for him or him giving consent to any such thing. Um, so mechanically, if you're going to use Colin David Ivan Wynn, Colin Miller's name in a correct sentence structure, it would be in all caps because he is no longer a live life claimant. Meaning, he has no claim of the live life because he's not living. Unfortunately. I mean, for some of us, we could say that. Um, so that's the first red flag of the knowledge level here. And then, mechanically, I'm seeing these haphazardly spaced lines under the letters, which... I don't know if they're trying to underline this or if or what's something happened with their computer. I don't know. So I'm just not, I'm just going to leave that to the side. Uh, not even going to, because this conversation hyphen topic question isn't even, there's nothing going on under there. So why underline these things, but not that thing or this other compound fact. 
uh, that makes no sense, actually. Now, I'm a big proponent of consistency. So they consistently capitalize the facts, but they also capitalize the first letter of the verb. I mean, it's not a big deal, but why would, why would you do that? Stylistically, yes, of course, you capitalize the first letter of the sentence. But why would you capitalize the, the verb? You know, that interesting there. Um, persist with the make perfect syntax grammar. Now, that reminds me of the quantum gobbledygook, uh, which is used by Russell J. Gould's followers, where they take a fiction babble sentence and try to insert it with hyphens into a correct sentence structure and call it a fact. So whoever this ATLJ is would have to have a finite mean for make, a finite make mean for perfect, one for syntax and one for grammar, and then they would also have to have a finite mean for make, perfect, syntax, grammar, all together. So that's one, two, three, four, five finite means for this word. I mean, created, the scenario is created by using that word. That's why I say to folks, try and keep it simple. Make it as simple as possible. Distill it down to its simplest form. And try not to use fiction babble sentences in your facts. Like in this one here, perform hyphen well is the same thing. It's the same type of... Uh, I guess, fiction, by my mind, fiction mentality. You're, you're putting sort of fiction concepts into a correct sentence structure. Why, why couldn't you say something like, uh, of the continue and persist with the perfection of the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, of the um, learn, and of the performance. I mean, why do you have to say perform well? I mean, well is an opinionated condition of state anyways. So for the learn and perform, oh, so they just wrote it backwards. Um, so in closing sentence, whoever this is that wrote this, I applaud you on your efforts, but there is much work to be done. And if you'd like to apply for a workshop, then uh, you know where to reach me. There's an email address right down there if you check it out. Next comment comes from Zavanabraham Yan. Thank you for your membership. And they say, hi, Jason. No internet past 12H from Zavan. Which I literally have no idea what they're talking about but i made a guess and i responded back after 12 hours does internet turn into pumpkin like cinderella next comment comes from member quadruple a thank you for your membership and they say this truly blew my mind and they're talking about the uh the whole debacle with marcus Sean christopher being arrested for attempting kidnapping this is very sad, authorizing death sentences and go out with a team to kidnap people. One would have very little chance in the U.S. or anywhere else, for that matter, of not getting hurt in the process of trying to kidnap someone. My guess, knowing a thing or two about the fiction system, they will do their best to investigate his mental state of mind and try to determine a mental illness and throw him in the madhouse. Now, interestingly enough, a quadruple A... I don't know if you know this about the past tense United States. Those things that we call the madhouse, very few of those exist anymore. Mental illness is not something that is, how can we say this? Um, it's not something that, that is treated very well here in the USA these days. Um, you can go to those five-minute psychologists that they call psychiatrists, 
And if you have insurance, you can get put on some sort of psychotropic drug uh, to turn you into a zombie or something. Maybe. But a lot of folks don't have that option, and so they just let them out onto the street. So you can be mentally ill. You can try to kidnap someone, and they're going to put you in prison, not in a madhouse, in a prison. Nothing to do with your mental condition of state. It has everything to do with if you continue to commit crimes or not uh, in the context of the fiction system crimes. So, yeah, the madhouse thing is not, not a not to my knowledge, not so much a thing anymore. As the same as it was 30 years ago. 30 years ago, there were such things as mental institutions, but they're few and far in between now. Nowadays, when violence is involved, standard procedure of the fiction is investigation of possible mental illness. People who actually go out with the volition of physically harming people in this setting are a threat to public safety. This is when T fiction certainly will come in. It's very sad to see David Wynn Miller is mentioned in this Mark Sean Christopher nonsense. Discredit the man and misspelled his name. Actually, um, in Mark's document there, he gave credit to David Wynn Miller. Because discredit means no credit. Uh, Mark actually gives credit to David Wynn Miller. <laughs> but it, it's a sort of a negative context because of where it's coming from. DWM did not show closure on the grammar, but I respect the man for bringing QG to the public. Um, I mean, I guess that's your opinion. Um, for myself, I have multiple videos giving evidence that David Wynn Miller made mistakes all over his papers. Now, as to whether he had closure on the grammar or not, one cannot concretely say that he did or he didn't, because he's not here to defend himself. But what I can say is that if you base your conclusion on the evidence, the paperwork that's available, his book, his website, then one would have to come to the conclusion, conclusion that no, Dave Wynn Miller did not have full closure on the grammar. That's the only conclusion you can really come to. Anything else in this is an assumption. Those of you out there that will say, well, he did it on purpose. He made mistakes on purpose. That's an assumption on your part. How do you know that? Oh, well, he said that he did. Okay. So what kind of a human being makes mistakes on purpose that could get people hurt or potentially put in prison? What kind of an individual does that? So you start running into all these other scenarios that you got to follow each trail down to its end. You got to play the tape the whole way through in every one of these scenarios. I know you folks out there that are what I would call hero worshipers. You put him up on a pedestal. You think he can do no wrong. He was a genius. He was blah, 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 blah. You probably didn't even know him. You probably never even spoke to him once. I, on the other hand, I didn't know him very well, but I spoke to him multiple times on the telephone, through Skype, text messages, emails, blah, 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 blah. So I do have a little bit of experience in that area, and I've gone into great depth in other videos on my position regarding all those mistakes and exactly how that ties into this and also ties into him being a self-possessed 92nd degree Freemason. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from Pi314. And they say, from Windsor Star Media, Ontario, we in the Archdiocese of Detroit are truly blessed by the Holy Father's recognition of its historic significance to the city of Detroit and its importance to the liturgical life of the entire Archdiocese. Said Archbishop Alan Vigneron, according to the Detroit Catholic, I did some parse on liturgical and archdiocese. Hmm. Hmm. All righty then. Thanks for sharing. Next comment comes from Cherry Sakura, and they say, great comedy channel, but Andy Devine is the best. Well, I mean, 
I appreciate that. I love putting smiles on people's faces. Uh, but if Andy is uh, the best comedy channel, well then, kudos to Andy. More power to him. I'm okay with, with coming in behind that. All right, folks. Grab your popcorn. Because these this next set of comments, eh, we're going to be here a while. So the set of comments comes from an, this individual right here, Yuk Homeos. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not. I have no idea. So who is this individual? There is no credentialing data. Let's find out what's going on. So today's date is August 22nd, 2024. This individual joined YouTube on August 21st, 2024. So they joined less than 24 hours ago, folks. Less than 24 hours ago. And they have left. They have invested all of this now space and energy. Not only this, but this next one too. Look at all this. They invested all this energy in these comments in the last 24 hours since they've created their YouTube account. Isn't that interesting to you? So let's dig in. The first comment they left, they said, I have heard and read that you claim to have a peaceful and neutral volition in most of your CSSCPSG claims. However, doesn't issuing a challenge and asserting the ability to disprove religious and spiritual beliefs contradict the idea of being truly peaceful and neutral? That is a yes or no question, and the answer is no. Psychologically, the act of challenging often implies a confrontational stance, which seems at odds with the concept of neutrality. Again, that is wrong. Shouldn't true neutrality focus on understanding and constructive dialogue rather than conflict and negation? Now they're getting into presumption and assumption because there is nothing negative about what I said. What I said, I issued a challenge for folks to prove their religious beliefs if they'd like to. It's just a challenge. That's all it is. Nothing negative about it. If you want to construe negativity from your own personal bias, that's up to you. Now you're telling me more about you than anything else. But conflict and confrontation and challenging is not avoidance of peace and neutrality. Confrontations do not have to be warlike because either there's peace or there's war. And I maintain a position of peace and neutrality until, of course, I'm threatened. And then that's off the table. But that's not the case here. See, I think the current, this is a guess on my part, the current generation has a tendency to want to be offended all the time. They're always looking, like, from a very sensitive point of view. Whereas someone like myself, who can be very straightforward and blunt, some people take that as, ooh, it's a negative, it's, a, it's, a, it's not neutral, when actually it is. That's your perception. I'm telling you what my volition is. You can't tell me what my volition is. You can tell me what your perception of my volition is, but you can't tell me what my volition is. I'll tell you what it is, because I'm me. I have a correct claim of the live life. I have a correct fate writ volition claim. All those things I have. Do you? So let's move on. Let's see what, uh, okay, here's my coolie on a back. I said discussion and dialogue and confrontation is constructive unless one construes being confronted as being threatened as some of the younger folks seem to do. I just said that. If one is secure in one's position, then one ought to incur no harm when being challenged. What is your correct sentence structure knowledge level, by the way? Are you just flailing around looking for things to critique because you've nothing better to do? So I'm poking them a little bit. 
And this is before I even knew that they only just created their YouTube account in the last 24 hours. This is before I knew that. This is just me looking at what's in front of me from past experience, you know, basing what I'm saying on past experience from potential trolls. So then they say, I wasn't aware there were levels associated with this technology. I've watched many videos, including yours, but I don't recall any mention of levels in this context. When you refer to levels, are you speaking in terms of grade levels or something else? As for my own level, I can't specify because I haven't been formally graded. So far, the concept seems straightforward. However, I'm curious about your challenge to religious people. After reviewing much of your content, I don't quite see how religion being subjective relates to quantum grammar, which appears to be grounded in facts. It seems to be a pointless endeavor. And, well, let me just read my kuleana back to that. I said, I will rephrase from 0 to 100. What would you estimate your correct sentence structure knowledge percentage? You seem to think it's not too difficult, so go ahead and demonstrate some knowledge for us here to show your skills. As for your last point, I agree with you, and I do. Hence the whole reason for me issuing a challenge to show those who are actually serious about learning that you must be able to certify your facts to another contract party. It's a lesson in learning what a fact is. If you lack the capacity to make that correlation, then it tells me that you're most likely a novice beginner with a 0-10% to 10 knowledge of correct sentence structure based upon my six plus years of teaching. So I'm estimating, without any other knowledge level, just based upon their adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble comments, that they're a novice, that they're a newbie, which is incorrect. Um, by my own admission right here, I'll just tell you with all humility that I was wrong. However, I can update that uh, assertion by saying that I think that their knowledge level is somewhere around 75% grammatically. But psychologically, what I call correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, psychology, they're definitely a novice. They're definitely 5%, if that, by the way that they phrase things and the way they, they actually handle things, different things that I'm saying to them communication-wise. Because if you're going to be a good orator, if you're going to be a good uh, a writer, communicate, that directs your fate. If you parse the word fate, you will find this out. That's why I have a fate writ volition claim. So you have to be able to communicate at a high level if you're going to navigate with ease through the sea of space. And someone like this is basically, I mean, think about it, folks. Think about that first comment I read to you. Is that a peaceful and neutral comment? Or are they challenging me to something? Are they confronting me about something? Well, it certainly appears so, low-key, but I'm not getting upset about it. I'm not taking it in a negative manner. I'm taking it in a, in a positive manner. I love challenges. And so here we are. So then they go on to syntax, my fiction babble sentence, which, by the way, is in brackets. However, they choose not to write in brackets, but that's fine. It's a good example. And this is when I realized, holy cow, this person has very good syntax knowledge. There's probably three syntaxing mistakes in here, as well as a couple of omissions, which is very, very good. Very, very good. Uh, and then they say, for this claimant's knowledge of the facts is with this claim of a knowledge level with the percentage of the 100 with this quantum grammar performance by this claim is valuation or consideration. So they're considering their quantum grammar performance. They're saying they have 100% closure, which is definitely not correct. I can definitely say with 100% certainty that is not correct because there are mistakes in there. However, this is a very good correct sentence structure. Um, concatenation is perfect. No particles of negation in the facts, although we don't know who the claimant is. But why nitpick? Um, so then my kuleana is, for the correct sentence structure, tutors and claimant's cognition of the sensation is with the knowledge of the facts, with the claim of the... Comeos' 
correct sentence structure knowledge with the percentage of the 75% with the valuation estimation of the correct sentence structure tutor and claimant with the Jason hyphen Matthew by the glass. So for the glass of the Jason hyphen Matthew is with the correct sentence structure tutor and claimant of the valuation with the per, with the seventy five percent of the percentage with the economist knowledge of the claim with the facts of the knowledge with the sensation by this correct sentence structure tutors claimants cognition so all that was just to say that I have amended my assertion of their knowledge level to 75%. So I do see a few syntax errors in your effort. My guess is they are mostly related to not looking up the word to credential tangibility. Also, some omissions that are not critical but important. I'll leave it to yourself and my advanced students to identify the mistakes. All in all, I'm happy to upgrade my assessment from 0 to 10 to 75. It's very interesting to me that you created your YouTube account less than 24 hours ago and that you chose my channel to share your very detailed and lengthy thoughts in the comments field. It appears as though the purpose of your activity here and reason for creating a YouTube account may not be such a mystery after all. Now, I'm being a little cryptic there. So they said, if it is your autograph, then you are the author and the authority of it, so you can choose whether or not it is underlined bottom line. I mean, that is true. You can. Um, my kuleana is the bottom line is a method of punctuation such as a hyphen, period, etc. Do you understand that? If you do and you understand correct sentence structure mechanics, then you will understand that the bottom line is not always necessary, similar to the period not always being necessary, etc. It depends upon the scenario, which is part of judge mechanics. Their response to that is, yes, I understand that the bottom line is a method of punctuation, but it is also based on rules. Rule one, rule equal come to mind, and whether or not the flexibility originates from the author based on context wasn't my point. Uh, actually, wasn't my point either. It's, it's not about flexibility. It's about the scenario that it's put in. I think consistency is key regardless of whether one is using QG technology or standard grammar in fiction. I agree. Standard grammar appeals to another authority, such as those found in styles manuals. However, in quantum grammar, I or you would be the author of such style. As long as closure is given by the author, I do not see any problems. Okay. While judge mechanics might fit well with respect to a scenario, I prefer author mechanics with respect to context. Just so you know, I mean, maybe you haven't watched very many of the 900-ish videos on this channel. I personally do not use the word judge anywhere in any of my correct sentence structure contracts. I use the word authority. For example, instead of having a judge's oath or judge's claim, I use the terminology grammar hyphen auditor and document contract court authority. That's where my authority comes from, from that document, that document contract postal vessel court venue. Again, you're obviously new here. Your YouTube account was only created less than 24 hours ago or so. So I can give you a little bit of grace there that you haven't watched very many of the 900 videos. The term judge implies an external authority, no shit, or decision maker, which may not align with the concept of context driven style where the author's discretion is paramount. Well, actually each of us are our own authorities, i.e. judges. So when I say judge mechanics, it's in the context of knowledge cultivation, someone who has the whole story, who needs to have the whole story before they come to a judgment or a conclusion. So if someone says judge in the context of this technology, we're normally talking about what you're talking about, author. So we're sort of getting into semantics here. The focus should be on the author's role rather than external evaluative process. Well, that's your assumption presumption there. Again, I just explained the context in which it's used. And then I say the point of correct sentence structure is to create a geometric level playing field of communication. 
to do that, there are rules. If you wish to make your own rules, cool. The problem arises when you attempt a contract with others because they must agree with your rules to complete the contract. Contract is by consent. We may contract together using the established consistent rules of correct sentence structure, or we can contract using Yuki Homes's personal rules. In this example, I would not contract with you because I choose correct sentence structure rules rather than incorrect grammar rules. As for your claim of Jew being a particle of negation, would you please provide an easily accessible source I may look at to certify your claim? A link to an etymology dictionary or something similar will do. Let me go back and look at this for a second. Okay, it says there. Additionally, Jew as a particle of negation supports avoiding the term judge. Okay, yeah. He did say that. Or they, she did say that. I don't know if it's a male or female. Or a hermaphrodite. No idea. Don't want to misgender anyone. So then they say, certainly the importance of mutual agreement on rules in any contractual agreement cannot be overstated. However, when we delve into the origins and authority behind correct sentence structure rules, it becomes clear that these rules are subject to interpretation. Wrong. 100% wrong. And this is my proof and continuance of evidence that while this individual may have maybe even a high intermediate level of grammar knowledge, their psych psychology knowledge is practically non-existent. Which, I mean, that's the difficulty of this path. It's hard enough to learn the grammar. For most people, maybe not for this person, but for most people, including myself, it was difficult to learn this. And then when you're done learning it, you have to learn the psychological aspect of it, how to carry yourself, how to navigate through these ports, these quays in this sea of space with rule one, rule equal, peace, neutrality, honor, grace, so on and so forth. You have to learn these things. You have to find out and, and certify for yourself what a fact is and where the authority comes from. Exactly. So, and be confident of that and be able to convey that to another individual. And this person does not, I mean, they're very intelligent. There's no doubt about it. They're very intelligent. However, on the psychology end of it, not so much. While David Miller is credited with discovering and explaining the mathematical interface of this technology, the true origins are far older and more enigmatic, like dating back hundreds of years. How in the living hell does this individual know that? And of course, they're not going to provide any proof. Of course. And this is what I'm saying. You know, they, they're, they're still, by my guess and estimation and perception, are participating with fiction. Um concepts stuff that you cannot prove it's all assumption presumption unless you were right there when something was happening you don't have any first-hand knowledge and so therefore you're assuming something happened because a book told you or a person told you or something like that this raises the question if the original author is unknown aren't we all in some respect interpreting and applying these principles as best as far as we understand them Actually, it's sort of like math. If it makes sense to you that 1 plus 2 equals 3, does it really matter where that came from? Does it really matter who the first nativity individual was who said that? The fact that it works is good enough for me. It's like folks out there making things way more complicated than they need to be. Regarding the flexibility of rules within the correct sentence structure framework, it's crucial to recognize that while standardization is beneficial, it's the mutual closure and understanding between parties that truly validates a contract. That is correct, 100%. If both parties are fully informed and in agreement about the rules they are using, whether a strictly correct sentence structure or a slightly adapted version, then the contract remains valid and binding. The key is, lies in one's volition, transparency, and consent. 100% correct. It's almost like this individual has watched over 900 videos on my channel and is basically repeating what I've said hundreds of times. 
As for the interpretation of Jew as a particle of negation, this isn't my claim, but a clear statement from David Wynn Miller himself. Oh, so the individual is appealing to authority. Now they're David said so. Here we go with the David said so's, which is what I thought when I when I asked him that, because I knew that he, she, or it were, were going to say that David Wynn Miller said so. Because I know that there is no readily available, easily accessible source that says that JU is a particle of negation. At least not one that I've found in six plus years, in over 30, 35,000 hours of study and performance. I've never seen it in any book. If there's some esoteric, archaic, ancient text that's dusty in some locked up library somewhere in Philadelphia where JU means no, it doesn't matter to us, folks, because we're the common folks. What matters is what we can do right now, rule one, rule equal. Because a secret locked up etymology textbook with all the secret meanings of real meanings of words, etc., etc., is a violation of rule one, rule equal. It doesn't apply to us anyways. Who cares? You end up with no facts at all. This interpretation lines with the understanding that while J.U. originates from Latin, I.U.S. is relating to law right within the context of quantum grammar, it signifies the absence of law. Says who? I understand your request for a readily accessible source, but the nature of this technology means that much of its understanding has been passed down through lectures and personal interpretations and teachings rather than traditional academic texts. So while finding a direct citation may be challenging, the underlying logic remains robust when viewed through the lens of the established teachings within this framework. No, actually, it just comes back to David said so, and that's it. I mean, if you want to view that as robust, that's your perception. For my perception, it doesn't mean anything because I can't prove it. And that's what a fact is, something you can prove with a continuance of the evidence. And David Wynn Miller saying that JU means no is not enough to credential something as a fact or to credential something as being true for everyone. It may be true for David, but it's not true for me. And then they say, or I say, your closure on JU as a particle of negation is because David said so. Appeal to authority, logical fallacy, which is not closure. Show me a dictionary so that I don't need to take your or David's word for it. I see that you do possess some correct sentence structure knowledge. I amend my earlier guess of novice to intermediate or even advanced intermediate. Yet you think the grammar is open to interpretation. That is fiction mindset. I navigate using mechanics anyone may use and prove for themselves. I do not even consider archaic, obscure texts because the knowledge must be easily available for all or to all, rule one, rule equal. For correct sentence structure, it must be fair. That is why everything I teach in my confidential workshops is available for free on my YouTube channel. My question for you now is, why are you here? What is your volition for being a guest in my comments field? Folks, when I say that, why are you here? What is your volition for being a guest in my comments field? Would you answer me straightforward? Or would you begin typing out a huge paragraph dancing around the issue? Just asking. I have 900 plus videos here giving closure to every grammatical claim I make, explaining every minuscule detail. Part of my credentials are in the thousands of hours I've invested in these public videos. You have not even shared your full correct name. You have pecued my suspicion. Meaning, I'm suspicious of this individual who just created the YouTube account and are spending all of their time posting massive comments in my comments field. That's weird to me. So then they say, thank you for the elevation of my correct sentence structure status. Your judgmental acumen is duly noted. I appreciate your inquiry into my volition for being a guest in your comments field. It's interesting that you use the term guest, which as you might know, has a rich etymological history. So what they're going to do now is go into what I would call, and my wife, who was a police officer for 28 years in Detroit, an avoidance of a situation. They could just straightforward answer the question, but they're not. They're going to give me an etymology lesson and the whole comments field an etymology lesson as if we need it on a grammar channel, right? As if I haven't done enough etymological videos giving closure to these things. I digress. 
I have not done a video on the word guest. So what I mean by guest, since we're speaking in plain, simple English this whole time here, up until this point, all right, is the common meaning of the word guest. If someone comes to your house, if I come to your house, if I'm in town, maybe, maybe you're, you're uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, okay? Maybe you live in Phoenix, Arizona, and I put on my YouTube channel, hey, I'm going to be in town. You want to sign up for a workshop? And then you say, yes, please come to my house. And then you give me your address. I come to your house to teach you a workshop. I am a guest in your house. I take my shoes off at the door. I take my hat off. I say, please, I say, thank you. I observe your etiquette, your terms and conditions, your vessel. That is what a guest is. We're not, we're not trying to be confusing here. We're not trying to play word games here. We're not trying to prove how smart we are here. I mean, we, by we, I mean me, myself, and I. Uh, but this individual, you know, maybe they, the way they write, they write very well. So I can tell that they have a good uh, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble knowledge level as well. But it's sort of over the top. Like they're sort of going out of their way, I feel, and that's my impression, to appear smat as they say in boston so anyways they go into this whole guest thing which anybody can figure this out given your back given this background your suspicion of me as a guest is understandable however it might be worth reflecting on whether that suspicion stems from an inherent hostility towards the unknown or unfamiliar after all in the realm of quantum grammar where precision is paramount it is not just about the rules we adhere to but also the openness to explore the origins and context that shape those rules um, I really don't know what they're now. I really don't know what they're on about here, what their volition is. Um, the suspicion stems from you creating a YouTube channel 24 hours ago and spending all this internet time on my channel talking about this, this channel, you don't have to dig too far into it to realize that it's about correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and those who want to learn it. If you're not here to learn it, why are you here? Are you here to argue with me? Are you here to tell me I'm wrong about something? Is there something I'm doing that you don't approve of? And what are your credentials? What is your correct name? Who are you? Where do you come from? Do you have a position with which to speak to someone like me? How long have you been teaching correct sentence structure? Do you teach it? I hope not. <laughs> but, although, I mean, you do have a high level of knowledge, but there's a lot missing. Anyways. Um, I was giving, uh, my name is something I was given by my mom and dad in a sense that makes it hearsay information that I was that I accepted as true because it was passed down to me. I did not create it myself. I simply received it and have used it as my identifier ever since. This ties into a broader point. A name is merely a label of symbolic representation, but it is not the thing itself. Well, yeah, obviously. For example, the word fire represents a concept and an element, but the word itself does not burn. Similarly, the name you or I carry does not encapsulate the entirety of who we are. It's simply a label. So what? I'm asking you for your correct name. Why are you dancing around? Seriously. However, I did take the step to create my own name. As you can see, my username, the name is derived from blah, blah, which has roots in the Greek verb, meaning a vow to wish or to long for. The name reflects a deep connection to one's wishes or desires, emphasizing intentionality in the pursuit of one's aspirations. It represents my chosen identity in this space, carrying it with a specific meaning and purpose that aligns with my values. But again, this name, like any other, is a symbol, a way to identify me within this context. The meaning of a name can reveal much, but it is not the thing itself, just the word fire, blah, blah, blah. Oh, wow. Thank you very much for... Uh, for your offer of deeper understanding on what a name is. <laughs> this leads me to question, what do you know? What about your own name? Do you know its meaning and origin? Yes, I do know its meaning and origin. I know that it was put on, just like yours, put on a birth certificate. 
and because of familiarity in my volition to facilitate ease of communication, I took that name and put it on my live life claim. And that represents me. And that's as far as I need to go with it. And as far as, I mean, contract goes, it is what it is. Again, I've made this statement a lot. People just, I mean, it's, it's cool to have deep thinkers that are out there thinking about all this stuff. But for me, I only go as deep as I need to go. If it's necessitated that I go deeper, I will. But it doesn't really hold my interest. What, hold my, what holds my interest is why are you here and asking these questions? <laughs> If we are to apply the same scrutiny to our identifiers, it stands to reason that understanding the meaning behind a name is essential to truly claim it as, as our own. Well, that may apply to you and for your contracts and whatever you do. However, to tell someone else what is essential for them is a presumption and assumption, i.e. for coming back to your almost non-existent knowledge of correct sentence structure psychology. You mentioned the importance of rules and consent in contracting on your channel, which I fully respect. However, before I reveal more about my credentials, perhaps we should first clarify whether use of guests is meant in the spirit of hospitality or a potential foe. Just the fact that they're asking that tells me that they may be the most high-level troll I've ever had on this channel. Now, whether that's intentional or not, I don't know, but that is, again, a name I'm giving representative to the energy that they're bringing here with all of this ish. As for your assertion that I am appealing to authority regarding the Jew particle negation, I find this an intriguing position. My reference to David Miller's explanation was intended to acknowledge the source of the concept, not as an appeal to an authority. Well, I asked you for closure on it, and that's what you offered. You didn't say that you were acknowledging the source, I asked you for a continuance of the evidence, and you didn't, you didn't give it to me. Worth knowing that much of what you teach also stems from David. Correct. Including your own statements in past videos about you being a part of negation, which, um, if you had enough in the old savings account to pay attention, I corrected that over the years, but that was years ago when I corrected it. So uh, you're kind of a day late and a dollar short in that respect. If you're asking for a link or source for me, then it stands to reason the same standard applies to your own teachings. True, and I do. I do give a continuance of the evidence to everything. So not sure where you're going with that. In the spirit of fairness and rule one, rule equal, it seems we are both engaging with the same body of knowledge and interpretations. That is not correct. We are engaging with the same body of knowledge, but not interpretation. If we are to continue this dialogue constructively, it may be more beneficial to focus on the substance of the arguments rather than the source of the claims. Actually, that is not correct, because where does the authority of your grammar come from? If your authority or your grammar or the meanings you give to words come from, for example, because David said so, then... There is no constructive proceeding here. All right, I'm not going to... This is crazy amount of... Uh, wow. So I just said, you know, thanks for sharing that data. I see one clear answer to one of my questions, your name, which actually wasn't a question. I just said, you have not shared your correct name. But you have not answered the other question as to why you're here. You're a guest in the sense that as long as you honor my terms and conditions, you may continue to comment. I may not give coolly honor to these comments for reasons of my personal efficient now space usage. If you have specific questions for me, if you'd like to apply for a workshop, email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Please include your full correct name. So what I'm doing here, folks, is, I mean... You folks may enjoy these comments, and as I said, I'm going to continue to approve the comments, and as long as he's, he, she, or it are uh, respectful with the balance of the honor and the grace, I'll continue to post them. But I may not pay much attention to them, because I see no point, because I don't know why they're here or why they're saying all this stuff. It's like they want to mitigate in a comments field, which I have said till I'm blue in the face. 
is not something that I like to do. I prefer to get to closure and get to it quick and as efficient as possible. So if this individual, you, what is their name again? Let me <laughs> scroll all the way back up here. Oh my goodness. Is this wild, folks? Yuko Males. If Yuko Males has something that they feel they need to say to me, if they feel I'm wrong about something, or if they need to criticize me or say something more, or argue, they want to argue about something, email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. I will set up a brief consultation. All I will need is 10 to 15 minutes, and we'll see exactly what you're on about, bro or lady bro or hermaphrodite bro, whatever you may be. We'll very quickly ascertain it. So go ahead and email me. I'll bet the house that you won't.